And welcome everybody here on Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Renekton Sejuani. This is going to be our next test of a Sejuani deck. Now let's head on over to Shirima. We're not going to be worried about um, hitting Allegiance anymore. We're going to we're going to have a second champion. It's going to be Renekton. And so Renekton's going to basically take the the place of the Avarosen Allegiance card, the Av Avarosen Outriders. So that's going to be our new four drop. Um, and now we're going to have, since we can play a different 5-drop, we're going to have Ruin Runner uh, replace Hearthguard. So both of those are pretty good upgrades. Um, and then we're going to have Exhaust and, and Ruthless Predator are going to be our spells. Uh, you know, basically playing these over like your Culling Strike and then like your, your Three Sisters and other stuff that we did there. Because uh, challenge units are going to be very good with Renekton. Um, we are playing Avros and Sentry in this list. That'll be interesting to see how that card does. We didn't have that one in the other one. We did have a couple of copies of Icefell Archer to kind of help out our Culling Strike. But Icefell Archer, as we saw there, was was honestly pretty useful at different times of just slowing our opponent down and, and uh, not letting them have a good attack against us. So we'll, you know, so that's going to be something to kind of keep keep our eye, eye out on of which one of those we like. Rockhopper is another option for the two mana slot because it can get the vulnerable for the Renekton. But I've never been that impressed with Rockhopper overall, um, even though it can do that. But I, I kind of like Sentry and Icefell Archer more, to be honest. But we're going to have the same top end. Battle Fury, Yeti, Wild Claw. We'll have another uh, two good, very good overwhelm things for the Battle Fury. And it's going to be our deck. All right, so let's go ahead and try Renekton Sejuani now. Okay, Zoe by Victor. Or Victor by Zoe. It's a good deck. I guess we just keep the Raider Trapper 2-3. So Exhaust... Yeah, okay. Exhaust is now my best draw, for sure. So we can, you know, have our one spell mana. We can challenge a Zoe. The Winter's Claw strikes. All right, very good first two turns for them. And there's our exhaust, perfect. So we can play that next turn with Renekton. Best draw on the deck. Took the bait. Okay, so their super cool star charts only couldn't cost one now. They did not uh, make it cost more. They can get the double stun, and that'd be the worst case scenario, I think. I mean, that'd be pretty bad. You know, they go star chart, double stun. Which looks like that's what they're going to do. Hopefully not. Hopefully something else. Alright, they got a doggy. Let's go ahead and challenge this. Get Renekton to be halfway towards leveling up. Plan is Ruin Runner on 5, Sejuani next turn on 6, give something else vulnerable so Renekton can challenge again and strike for 6 again with the vulnerable. Sand and trouble far as the eye can see. So is it the 4-1 or the 3-2 lifesteal? The 4 one's like a better blocker. Well, this can you know heal the Nexus and everything, but the 4 one's a better blocker at having things survive. I think it's yeah, I think it is the 4-1. Just because how because if I do the 3-2 lifesteal, then their 4-1 can like block my ruin runner, and that's a mess. Uh, 
Alright, so this is 17 overwhelm damage coming in. Looks like they have 8 defense, so 9 damage. Put him to 6. Leveled up Red Necton is pretty scary. We have the backup the over backup leveled up Red Necton just in case. In hey Goomba. Our turns have been pretty easy with this deck. That's I've always had good success with these Sejuani Overwhelm decks, but they're also kind of easy to play, and so I like I like them. You, know, you just kind of curve out and play really big stuff, and it's it's hard to stop. My opponent's over here, like, having so many decisions to think about. You know, having a million cards with their Targon deck. What are they going to do? And I'm just... Play big stuff. Smash. We got Yeti Wild Claw. <laughs> Sunlight guiding, my brethren. Yeah, I'm... <laughs> yeah, Ducky, like, these decks are... These decks are really hard to stop. I always have a pretty low win rate against these decks, honestly. And a pretty high win rate with them. Like, they, they're they good. The other, there's the other doggo. There's Harvey. Lifesteal Scout? That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Once I stab papers, now faces. Our goals are greater than their violence. Yes, of course. Mm. No mercy. Who gets the plus two? The spell shield? Maybe Sejuani, because Sejuani's only five. Sejuani's kind of e the easiest to kill. Spell shield's not that hard to kill, it just takes two cards. This will still do spell shield. Put the lifesteal way over there. I could have done the, the plus... Honestly, it could have just do the plus two on the Enrage Yeti so they couldn't save Victor with the Pale Cascade or, a, you know, something like that. Or, like, the two mana plus zero plus two. But that'll do. Alright, we're playing against an aggro deck for the first time today. Or at least... Yeah. Yeah, I guess this is the first, first like, burn style deck. All right, so Wild Claw definitely gone. Now, Ancient Yeti is gonna be great on like turn five. So we have like turn four, turn five, gonna be pretty good with this. It's hard to mulligan these, but I, I need to find something for like turn three. Probably. Um, I think I'm gonna keep these. I would out of the two of them, I would. I'm pretty set on keeping the Yeti and honestly kind of the Troll Chant. It's really the Renekton would be the card that to maybe mulligan. Okay, well, Battle Fury is, you know, not a good card to draw. So, uh, it's time. we did not draw well with <laughs> Fury Fury. Uh, hey, ghetto. Dig your get up. Plus, Ruthless Predator. Let's do this. Not necessarily the best. I could, I mean, I could troll chant that and then Ruthless Predator, <laughs> but if they just have a Mystic Shot, that, that'd be their card, it would be Mystic Shot, it'd just kind of waste all that. Probably not the thing to do. As I live, all will die. Mm -hmm. Some 
I don't know. I don't know if this is worth it, to be honest. Okay. Get excited. You know, that takes... That's something that does a lot of damage, so... We traded two for two. Six mana worth of cards on my end, six mana worth of cards on their end, but of course the Draven does make all those spinning axes, which helps them out, so... That wasn't the... That was not the worst case scenario. No other attacks. No other attacks. That's it. <laughs> Mervin's talking about game one. How we, yeah, so yeah, we did win game one. We're on game two right now. worth it. These crowd favorites are really big. Hit really hard. This is six mana. I kind of hope they use like a get excited on the Sejuani that it, then I could save with the troll chant. Oh, I was not hoping for that. No. Okay, this puts me down to six. I mean, they can't kill me at six. They can't. Sorry, they cannot kill me at six. Yeah, we got tons of people in here today. Welcome everybody. Great crowd today. If y'all, if you, if you're somebody who's newer to this channel, this is what I do every day at this time. I play Legends of Runeterra. Usually we play, um, you know, pretty crazy decks. We play four decks like this every single day. Um, with it being very close to the seasonal tournament, I am, uh, you know, I'm doing this like where we're focused more on ranking up for that. Usually we play viewer submitted decks and and uh, have a lot of fun. Really explore the edges of Legends of Runeterra. Okay, we're gonna attack for twenty. And 20 will do. So the troll chant, so you, you might have thought like that, that troll chant play that I did was a little weird if you don't know what I was doing there. Basically, what I had was, I wanted to set up exactly that, like that attack back. Um, I didn't think it was very likely that they would have, like, I did go down to six, and so they could have had exactly two, their second and third get excited and killed me. I, that was an option. But by doing what I did, I kept the health of both of my attackers alive. Like, if I, if I don't do that troll chant, it, uh, like I'd have like a two health and a three health and one of them we would be able to have the battle fury with the plus eight plus four be able to kill something or like you know be able to be large so then they can't kill it but like the other one would have been like a three health and so then they could have use like a get excited to get rid of the three health and I didn't want that to happen ooh Vladimir Brom those y'all that are viewer of the channels know that Vladimir Brom's Always a deck that I struggle with. Mulligan, Mulligan. What say you, Renekton? I guess if I kept Renekton Ancient Yeti against Discard Burn, I should probably keep it against Braum Vladimir.
So would Dunekeeper have been better here? Uh, Dunekeeper would match up against the Bloodletter better, but then we're not making, you know, big Ruin Runner. Big Ruin Runner, pretty cool. Not a great turn for me. Okay, uh, no, I haven't really thought about that. Uh, Devil has a suggestion for the stream of uh, Champion Spotlight Days, where we have four different de four different decks based around a champion to play the champion with like different region combinations and everything. Okay, because Devil's enjoying the Sedjuani day and thought that that could be a thing. Okay, yeah, that could be pretty cool. That could be pretty cool. We could even have like one of the days of the week be Champion Spotlight Day. And so each week we just do that. Uh, which one of these am I going with? What are you waiting for? I guess Exhaust. So I'm going Exhaust because I can still play Ruthless Predator if need be for the plus two plus zero because it's burst speed. It's not focus speed. Where Exhaust is focus speed. And so I can't do that later. Okay, Renekton is halfway to leveling up. For the right prize. So Crimson Curator created... The first Crimson Curator created this Blood Letter, which then created something else. Ooh. Seen tombs, towns, and the Scar Grounds. That card's good. Come, Clara, we have much to teach you. I can't wait. Yeah, I mean, I can't stop it. Look what you did. That old trick again. Unfortunately, the, the tough does mean that my Renekton doesn't actually won't actually level up here because it's only going to do five damage. Is it worth using one of these right now? Yeah. Chase them down. Because I think, like, whenever we attack next turn, we're probably going to open attack and then have Battle Fury and Predator together, but that's 10 mana. We're not going to have, um, you know, by that turn, we'd have 11 mana. We wouldn't have enough mana for um, Battle Fury, Predator, Predator, so we might as well just use that right now. And that did. It saved me a decent amount of life. I have the name. I need the reputation. Be an important amount of life. Yeah. Right, we're gonna not let this die. By all means, get in my way. The bloodier the better. I have to block, otherwise I'm dead. I guess just blocking with the 4-2 is just better than blocking with the 5-3. So there just wasn't... I should have blocked with Renekton. There wasn't any reason to keep Renekton alive. What happened? Crack their bones, then we feast. Do they misclick? 
Well, so I'm guessing, okay, so probably misclick. They clicked on Fury of the North. And so then if, if that's the case, then they only had one one thing of interaction with just that. So our second Battle Fury should have won that game. So we should have been just fine. Ooh, playing against some deep. I'm playing against Nick. Nick's a really cool streamer. All this is kind of keepable. Like, the Ruin Runner is the card that you could probably mulligan, but I don't know, it kind of fits here. The Winter's Claw Strikes! I deal in coins and carnage. Make it worth my while. My 3-1 was vulnerable, permanent vulner vulnerability. Not much reason to uh, use an exhaust to keep it alive and then, you know, it just dies to whatever with it being vulnerable. You know, they play like the one we had 2-1 and challenge it or something. Really, Trapper? <laughs> Couldn't show up last turn when I had nothing to do on turn three? Show up this turn. I could see passing here, because now that lets them play Maokai. But our deck, it, like, all the damage does matter with our deck, so I, I did go ahead and attack, but I could see pla I could see passing. We'll see We'll see how, like, that pays out. You know, I, I wanted to, you know, I'm interested to see how that uh, plays out, like, if passing would have ended up being better for me or not. This is not the time to be drawing Avros and Trappers, though. Chase what you want without mercy. Interesting. So I'm really considering going for going for like Battle Fury on this Ruin Runner this turn. Kinda think I wanna do that. I cannot be broken. They have to block because otherwise it would have been 16 damage. Still a lot of damage. Alright, cool. That will do. We four and O. Oh. Alright, here's a Rillian Soul plus Shivana. Very good deck. This is gonna be a tough one. Let's keep this Renekton and keep our spells, I think. Yeah, I think I keep both spells. There we go. Let's see, we haven't had the best turn two, turn three plays, but we gotta save spell mana for a lot of our stuff too. These old eyes still wow. See far and clear. Um, obviously keeping the Ruthless Predator looks like a pretty big mistake because <laughs> we just have multiple other Ruthless Predators in here. Never again will we fall to dragon fire. To arms! And Dragon Guard Lieutenant's so proud of having two arms. Renekton also has two arms. I probably, again, good spot to pass. Probably can't do that, though. No, face your end. Yeah, this is probably, Shiv you know, like, again, could be just like last time I attacked and they play Maokai. I attacked and play Shivana. Okay, 
Okay, never mind. I'm gonna go draw Shivana. Alright, we got leveled up Renekton. So now even if this Renekton dies, we got some other leveled up Renektons as well. I serve my people with pride. It's a good question. The question is what are the bad matchups of Overwhelm? And I don't know. You just you kind of just lose some games, right? Like when you have like a bad curve and stuff like that. If your opponent has a good curve, but I don't know if there's any like particular like matchup that's bad. It's it's more of just like the variance of like what some you know like you'll lose some hands and stuff. They are nothing. You're just gonna let this happen with having multiple other Renektons. No, that's not the aggressive line, because you know, if I like troll chant that I can like open attack in Battle Fury. You cannot hide forever, Nasus. Her light is our sword, her womp, our armor. Yeah, I don't want to deal with that thing. We'll find our prey. Put them down. Face your end. Oh, I guess the other way. Which way? Which way is the easiest to stay alive from fight spells? Let's see. This thing attacks for more. All right. Well, final answer. Get that plus one plus one here, because that we may draw a, a unit that that plus one plus one really matters, or we draw an exhaust. You know, one of the two. Because I could always just play the tavern keeper this turn. Of course, healing Wow Claw. This is our first time to draw Omen Hawk in the late game, where you really don't want it. We had been doing very good of not drawing Omen Hawk in the late game. Hush is a card. Do I already Battle Fury? I kind of want to just Battle Fury and just use my mana because who knows, maybe we draw another Battle Fury. No. Still have hush. Buffing Omen Hawk 
is not only vulnerable to hush, but then also vulnerable to single combat. So that's why I kind of think it's Wild Claw. Well, I guess no, Wild Claw would die to single combat also. But then if they have that gone, then they then they die. Yeah. So basically, if they single combat here, they gain three six nine. No, they stay alive. They do not die. Okay. Geez, I'm not sure which one's better there. Like, it's it's either the the Alpha Wild Claw or the other one. Well, I guess it could have been just the 8-8. I guess, yeah, I guess maybe Renekton was the best option against single combat. Yeah, I guess it was. All right, so we got the 5-0 with Renekton Sejuani. Really liked this version. What I really liked about this version was actual Renekton. Renekton was winning almost all of those games for us. It was incredibly powerful for a four mana card. Um, we had it basically every single game. And we had all of these, um, you know, vulnerable cards to go along with Renekton. And Renekton was just dominating. So this version looked really good. It did. I could see having like another Tavern Keeper maybe. I don't know. We we kind of struggled with things to do on turn two, turn three. We didn't, we didn't have like Averroes and Trapper ever on turn three. But I guess... Like, you know, you do get to save your spell mana, which is nice. So yeah, this version definitely felt really good. It's going to be tough for Sivir's version to top this, but Renekton felt awesome with that overwhelm and challenging everything. Uh, yeah, this this card looked great. Okay, so uh, yeah, that's true. I had to battle Fury the Hawk also, right? With name being Hawk, right? That was that was obvious. Obviously, I needed to do that. <laughs> All right, uh, those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there. And of course, as always, feel free to leave those comments. Um, you know, let me know what you think of the deck, which version of these Overwhelm Sejuani decks you like the most, or what are your, your plans for the seasonal tournament or anything like that. I always love seeing those comments. All right, but that's it here for Renekton Sejuani. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.